What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation, the best pitching community on YouTube. And without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Jose Suarez, who I don't think I've ever featured, but he had eight strikeouts and seven innings, giving up no runs, thanks to his slider, his changeups, and his fastball. Suarez outdueled Cole Irvin, who was also really good. Irvin gave up one earned run in eight innings with six strikeouts, thanks mostly to his fastball, but he also had some wicked curveballs. Amazingly, opponents are only hitting 180 against Cole Irvin's fastball with a 21% whiff rate, despite the fact it really isn't a very high-velocity fastball. Irvin just has a great plan in attacking hitters. I know he gets his heat maps from Codify Baseball, and he's got really good command in executing those maps. There's more than one way to get it done. Irvin's ERA this year is now 2.92. Keegan Thompson had his nasty curveball and slider working. He had three strikeouts in six innings, giving up only one run. Jamison Tyone had this dirty curveball and six strikeouts in seven innings. Chris Bassett went eight innings with eight strikeouts, giving up no earned runs. And he had pretty much all of his pitches working. His fastball, his cutter, his nasty two-seamer, and his sliders. I thought this was cool. Bassett throws his sliders at two very different speeds. He can be either low 80s or mid to low 70s with it. Even if you're sitting slider, you have to guess which slider. After the game, Bassett commented that his job on the team is an innings eater. Which just goes to show... Chris Bassett will eat anything. My job's always that, to eat innings. It's not punch guys out or anything like that. It's just to eat innings. You make a mistake, and I'm going to be literally eating your ass. Like, and, and obviously, Mania's like that. Like, <laughs> wait, wait li- like, literally? <laughs> figured it'd be home. Alex Wood was filthy with five strikeouts and six in the third innings, showcasing his two-seamer and his changeup. Wood is another one of those guys who regularly throws an elevated two-seamer due to his low arm slot. The rule used to be to throw two-seamers down in the zone, more as sinkers, but as we delve more into pitch design and analytics, you can see elevated two-seamers work. Wood outdueled Blake Snell, but Blake Snell was also dominant. He had a combination of curveballs and elevated heaters, and Snell's fastball complements that curveball really well. Here's an overlay of a 96 mile an hour fastball and an 82 mile an hour curveball, and you can see what I mean. That curveball drops from the sky. But my filthiest starting pitcher yesterday was Zach Gallon. Gallon had eight Ks in seven innings, giving up no runs and only three hits. He was absolutely painting with his stuff. He had these nasty cutters and hammer knuckle curves. I mean, look at the vertical break on those curveballs. Here's an overlay of his fastball and curveball, and you can see what I mean. That curveball just dives out of the fastball plane. Before the game, Gallon was talking about how he needed to throw elevated fastballs to protect his curveball so hitters just couldn't lay off it. And it clearly worked. Here is Zach Gallon describing his knuckle curve grip for you. Spike knuckle curve right here. Um, I hooked the, the, the seam right here you know, kind of dig my nail in a little bit, and then that should prevent it from popping out on you. How are you releasing it? Pretty much just, like, straight up, like, trying to just get straight over the top, like, as close to 12-6 as I possibly can get. When it's going really well, I can feel my hand get to, like, right at that point, and then right at the end, it just kind of goes. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Felix Bautista had this nasty splitter. CNL Perez had this vicious slider. Clay Holmes had this front door two-seamer. Josh Hader was his usual overwhelming self. But my filthiest reliever of the night was Camilo Duvall. Check out this overpowering 103-mile-an-hour fastball to end the game. And if that's not unfair enough, here's that 103-mile-an-hour fastball coupled with his 100-mile-an-hour sinker. So as a hitter, you're facing two pitches at over 100 miles an hour that are at approximately the same height but end up in very different locations. Unhittable. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. It's not often that you see a runner score from second on a pitch down the middle, but 
Kid Mickey Janice's again, knuckleball isn't just any old pitch. Gonna roll all the way to the the perils of being a knuckleballer. What is up, Ninja Nation? My picks of the day today are to parlay three pitchers who have been really good to me recently. I'm going to take Braxton Garrett for 7Ks or more, Charlie Morton for 8Ks or more, and Shohei Otani for 9Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 